just want to say, talking with those of you in the room, I'm so amazed by all the technology that's here. Everything that you do, and I'll, I'll push for this a little bit later, can support public safety in one way or another. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about your innovations moving forward, because we would love to continue to work with you. I want to quickly just tell a story to all of you, and I'll make sure I keep it under the five minutes. Um, six years ago, um, July 20th, I was on Engine 1 in the Aurora Fire Department just east of the Denver, Colorado area. Engine 1's a busy engine. We run all night long and we finally slept from about 8 p.m. until about 4 a.m. And I thought, gosh, this is great. We never sleep on Engine 1, right? We got a call to head out to an a, a apartment complex for a mom that had been placed into an apartment. As we're driving to the scene, we hear all this radio chatter, right? The radio chatter comes up, and we're checking our cell phones, and we're seeing that there was an active shooter at the Aurora Theater in the city of Aurora, if you remember that. 12 people that were shot, or excuse me, 72 people shot, 12 people unfortunately were killed. We're going to that scene, and I hear all of the different challenges that we're facing at. So I want to tell you the story of exactly what happened there from a technological perspective and the challenges that they faced. So if you can think of basically this size of a room is our dispatch center for the city of Aurora. Over on this side, those of you sitting over here are our police dispatchers. You take all the information and you dispatch the police. Kind of back here in this side are our 911 call takers. They take in all the 911 calls as, as they need. And then over on that side are our fire dispatchers, right? So you've got all of these individuals that do their job on a daily basis. But at about 11.59 p.m. that night, this shooter walked into the back of this theater with 1,400 people in three separate theaters, and in the first 30 seconds, he let loose about uh, 60 shots, and then kept going from there. So imagine what happens after an event like this, right? You've got 1,400 people that are all streaming out of the theater. Most of them are, sadly, they're covered in blood because they're trying to help their individuals and their friends get out. But what are they doing, right? They're all pulling out their cell phones. They're all either calling 911, or if this event were to happen today, they're all getting on Snapchat, they're all getting on Facebook Live, they're all getting on YouTube, and they're streaming all of this live. So what happens to the network? It starts to degrade and doesn't have the capacity to get through. So public safety that's responding to the scene don't have the capacity to get through and make the critical communications they have. So what happened? You had all those 911 calls coming in, and the dispatchers would send, okay, we heard that there's one person shot, so they send it over to the fire side because they're going to send medical. They send that over to the police side as well. As soon as police and fire get on scene, they see that this is absolutely the largest public mass shooting to date in the country. So police are saying, send me more resources. But keep in mind, they don't have the capability to talk on their radio to the fire people that are over on the other side of the parking lot. So they can't tell them to send more resources. They have to tell their dispatcher. So the police dispatcher gets on and they say, okay, we're gonna get you more resources, but the only capacity that they have to pass that message to you over here on the fire side is by either text message into a computer system or on an intercom saying, hey, we'll send more resources. If you've got hundreds of 911 calls coming in and everybody in that dispatch center is completely inundated, how are those two individuals and how is that telephone game going to play out? It doesn't play out well, right? So by the nature of the technology that was available to them at that time, they didn't have the capacity to have good situational awareness and manage that incident as well as they could have. That's not saying anything bad about the individuals that were on the scene. They did a fantastic job. It was the technology that wasn't allowing them to communicate well. So fast forward to today, and we have a thing called FirstNet. FirstNet came out of incidents like this. It is, in, in simplest terms, a dedicated, off-site, public safety broadband network that's specific for public safety. It's got its own dedicated core, and it's designed specifically for them. That came out of public safety saying, we want this. We want a, um, a police fire and EMS, they all came forward and they said, give us our own network so we can not have these communications problems. We can talk with each other moving forward. So that was what came out of this from a statute in, in Washington and now it's moving forward to today. So specifically how this moves is it is that one network with critical connections and it provides priority and preemption. So when everybody's up there streaming on Snapchat and they're doing all of their things, 
They can cut straight through that and be at the top of the line and even push people off of the network. This is the truly innovative component of it. Push people off of the network, they can still call 911, but public safety has the ability to utilize the data and the voice as necessary. So, when we have these incidents in the future and people have FirstNet, they will be able to talk directly with one another. They'll be able to put a drone up and be able to have live video footage of what's happening. They'll be able to communicate seamlessly, have that situational awareness, utilizing all of the technology and capabilities in this room to assist public safety. So FirstNet really is that game changer, but it's just a pipe. It takes truly every one of you to make that work for public safety. So I'll just say thank you to all of you, and hopefully I'm not too much over the time.